Okay, so let's get started. So first I wanna do chapter five lab. In chapter five, we studied cross-validation and the bootstrap. And the cross-validation is especially useful to compare different models in uh, the model uh, for, uh, yes, to compare the different models that they in this textbook. So we have different models in this textbook, such as, you know, linear regression, and we will study um, other models such as lasso, uh, rich regression. Those are still uh, kind of linear model, but also other models such as LDA, support vector machines, and so on. So cross-validation is especially, you know, the, um, particularly very the useful tool to compare different models. So basically we focus on cross-validation and um, yeah, for this the chapter five lab. And the, we will do a similar exercise, exercise six um, today. Um, if we have time, maybe we go to chapter six, but the, uh, probably the, um, Chapter five lab and exercise six are enough for today's lecture. Okay, so yeah, and uh, um, do you have any questions about homework? So homework will be due tomorrow, and then I will give the midterm. I'm thinking to make the midterm slightly more practical than the last year. So maybe um, I use the data set and uh, um, have you, you know, the analyze the data and then make the best prediction model or something like that. I'm thinking about it. Okay. Okay, so now chapter five, lab. So before cross-validation, we studied the uh, um, validation set approach. So we separate the group, we split the group, the data set into two groups, the training set and the test set. And the, um, we can do, um, you know, analysis on test error. So test error is the most, most fundamental um, form of cross-validation. I mean, it's not really cross-validation, but the idea is that we measure a kind of out-of-sample performance of our model. Okay, so we use this auto data set in ISLR package. So remember that the, this data set includes the date therefore 392 uh, different car models and the, it lists it includes the mpg the mile per gallon and the horsepower and some other um, variables so we have 392 observations so we split this data into the 196 each and here that we evaluate the training error and the test error in a training error, the training set and the test set are the same. So we estimate the model with a data set and we just evaluate the MSE, mean square error, for the same data set. So a kind of, we know the data set B, but the, we still you know, predict data set B. So it's not really the fair uh, prediction, but the, it's probably the simplest thing to do. And a test error, the training set and the test sets are different. So we estimated model with training set, then we evaluate the model with the test set. So if we have the linear regression model that we train the model, for example, y is equal to a plus bx. So suppose y is equal to 0 0.8 plus 1.2x. Then, okay, so this is from the training set A, but the using these coefficients that we predict the y value from the x value of B. So that is the um, test error. And here, 
um, to compare the training error and the test error that we want to use the same data set for testing purpose. So for, to evaluate training error that we use the data set B, then we evaluate the test error for B. And for test error that we use the different data set A, then we evaluate test error B. So basically the, um, to compare the size of training error and the test error, the, these data set, they should be the same. If these data, two data sets are different, then that we have more uncertainty. I mean, the, we don't really know the, what's the difference. You know, the, it, you know, the um, variability of the data comes in. So we want to use the same data set. So in this way that we compare training set and test set. You know, the training error, we can do training set is A, test set is A, but in such a case, these data sets are different. You know, the two data test sets are different. So it's harder to compare. So that's why that we use the BB, not AA. Okay, so we use the library ISLR for the data and the, we set seed just to, to replicate the uh, result because the, we split the training set and the test set randomly. So if we set seed, we can replicate in uh, your computer again, or you can use different computer to replicate the same result. So we pick 196 num um, observations from um, all observations without replacement. So without any um, duplications, we pick up uh, half of the data set. And this is the entire data set. So we have the um, negative relationship between MPG and the uh, horsepower. So MPG is Y and horsepower is X. And here the logo of MPG was taken because the, we have some curvature if we don't take the logarithm. So, okay, so here that we fit the linear model MPG on horsepower with the test set. So this means the data set B. And to evaluate training error, that we have to train the data with B and the test with B. So we train the linear model with data B, that is LM1.R lm.1r and that we again they use the test set so b so this is training error so we estimate the parameters with data b then we just uh, um, take the um, you know the um, difference between y value and estimated y value so this is y hat so we take the difference then take square basically. Then we only take this for the test set. So the, this is the training error. And how about the test error? In test error, we have to estimate the model with some data set and we have to test it with a different data set. So we use the data set A, training set to train the data. Then the, we test with the test set, test set B. Then we get the, this the, um, number. So you can see that the training error is usually smaller than the test error. It of course depends on the sample. So if the test error is smaller, it's not your mistake in coding, but the most of the time test error is larger than training error because the training error, basically you know the answer and then you fit the model. So usually the performance is better. Yeah, sometimes test error is smaller. Uh, for example, the training data set, for, for example, in this case, the um, mm, mm. yeah, that's pretty rare. That's pretty rare, but it's still possible. Okay, so this is the uh, difference between training and test set. And the next that we consider polynomial regression model that we fit MPG on, um, horsepower, I mean, the several different, um, you know, terms of horsepower, the um, 
intercept horsepower and horsepower square, horsepower cube, and so on. And here, the, we have already taken logarithm here, but the, um, um, in the next example, we just use this MPG itself, not log of MPG. So probably that we have some curvature. So rather than a straight line, maybe quadratic curve or cubic curve fits better. Yeah. And here that we fit several models and the, we use the training set here. We use the test set here. And at first we wanna uh, calculate the training error for P is equal to two, three, and four. Maybe we should try the P is equal to one also, but the here, the two, three, four. And the um, P is equal to two, basically the, we use the, these um, estimation results to evaluate training error. So Y value minus Y hat value. And we use just the same data set B to evaluate the error. So this is training error. And you can see that the training error always gets smaller and smaller. So if this is A, this is B, this is C, you can see B is smaller than C, as B is smaller than A and C is smaller than B. So always the training error gets smaller if we have more variables. So here the polynomial with degree two, polynomial with degree three and four. So polynomial with degree four has most, you know, flexible is most flexible model. So the training error is smallest. So this in this method, we cannot really choose the optimal P. But the, if we evaluate the test error, so we use the different data set for training, then we evaluate the test error with the different data set. Then we get um, mean squared error as these numbers. And you can see that the if we say, okay, so this is A prime, B prime, C prime, you can see that the A prime is actually smallest. Uh, probably um, we have, if we try degree one polynomial, P is equal to one, probably error is larger. So we can see that the um, P is equal to two is optimal um, in the, uh, I mean, in terms of test error. So in this way that we can decide the best model. So uh, with training error, we cannot decide which model is the best because more complicated model always has smaller error. Basically we have the overfitting or, or overlearning of the model. So yeah, so in this way that we can evaluate the model. And this is another um, output. So based on test error, we have already seen that probably P is equal to two is appropriate, but this also suggests the um, result. So we've used the LM4 result. So this is the um, basically um, P is equal to four with data set A. And you can see that the, um, this is the intercept, and this is the, um, you know, the linear function of horsepower, and this is quadratic function of horsepower, and this is cubic function, and this is quadratic function of horsepower, and you can see only the first three terms are significant, and the last two terms are not significant. So the, we can guess that the probably p is equal to two is sufficient. The significance and the um, test error are not corresponding exactly, but the, um, we have some sense that there may be a cubic curve, cubic term and the quartic curve are uh, redundant. Yeah, and here, uh, actually the first, second, three, third, fourth, but the, this isn't really the HP and HP square and HP cube and HP, um, to the fourth power, slightly different uh, because the, if we take this way, the, these variables are so similar. So think about the y is equal to x cube and y is equal to x to the fourth power when x is between zero and one. 
So these two curves are too similar. So it's harder to estimate parameters. So rather than uh, doing this, uh, using these terms, the R uses the orthogonal the basis. So you can see that the linear term is just you know constant, and the sorry the the the, the intercept is just constant, and the linear term is like this. But the um, quadratic term, the if we take the x square, that is um, uh, kind of similar to this pattern, for example, if the range is 0 to 1. So we use this kind of orthogonal basis so that the, these two functions are totally different. And the cubic curve, um, I'm not exactly sure, but the idea is that, that we uh, have totally different curve like this. And quotic curve, maybe we have another totally different curves like this. Then we can it's, it's, it is easier to estimate the coefficients of these terms, so also on our basis. Basically, this is the polynomial function, P-O-L-Y function, that automatically genera generate the orthogonal basis so that the, uh, these estimates don't have, um, you know, multicollinearity. So, so that the standard deviation is not inflated. Of course, interpretation gets slightly more complicated, but the, in this way, we can estimate parameters more reliably. Yeah. Also, we have some singularity problem. You know, the, uh, if the, these two are too similar, maybe x cube and x force power is fine. But if we go x to the 10th power and 11th power, these are too similar um, for some intervals. So um, in such a case, we have some estimation issues. So in such a case, um, it's particularly useful to use the POLY function. Uh, by the way, if you want to fit the um, uh, really HP, HP and HP square, you have to put the HP and the I of HP square and I of HP cube and so on. So if you simply put HP square or HP cube, it does not work. It returns an error. Um, basically because the, this, the um, uh, product, the product of, for example, X1 and X2, this um, uh, means the, um, the multiple terms of x1 square and x1, x2, and x2 square. So the multiplication in the linear re regression object is used for this purpose. So probably that is why we have to put i to include the square of hp. Um, any questions so far? So to decide the best model, the training error cannot be used. So we have to evaluate test error. And more sophisticated method is cross validation. And the, we discussed that the leave one out cross validation is best. Um, so in terms of reliable results. So the how to run the LOOCV. And generally speaking, um, the, to calculate the cross-validated error that we can use this, the cv.glm function in library boot. So this is a package for bootstrap. So that's why it's named boot. And cv.glm. So cv.glm do cross-validation on glm object. So remember that, that we have the LM object. This is usually for linear model and also the GLM object. Usually the GLM is used, for example, logistic regression or uh, count regression and so on. But the, anyway, GLM includes the um, all linear case. So if we write just the GLM y tilde x and without any options, then these are the same, LM and the GLM are the same. So that's why the, this cp.glm function is you know, um, developed the, um, only to, uh, you know, the, to adapt to the GLM object. 
So if you want to do cross validation, then you have to fit the GLM MPG on host power. Then um, we can get the cross validated error by just typing um, cv.glm and the um, data set and the model. So I think the default is the P is equal to, sorry, I'm not exactly sure. GLM, the K is equal to sample size N, the default value of K is sample size N. So this is leave one out cross validation. So without specifying anything, so this becomes LOOCB. Um, Yeah, I think this may be true for all models, all GLM class, but uh, um, yeah. So cross-validated error is 24.23 and 24.23. Um, actually, the, these two are uh, very similar numbers. So the second one has some adjustment. So the first one is the cross-validated error, cross-validated the mean square error in the usual sense. And the second one is MSE adjusted by a bias introduced by the smaller training sets. So we have 392 observations, but the, in the uh, cross validation, we use 391 as training set and one as test set. And we repeat this 392 times. But anyway, so this number of observation is slightly smaller than this, one smaller than 392, right? So that means that um, we, you know, overestimate the error size because 391 observation is less accurate than 392 observations. So that difference is here. So actually almost the same, but the slightly smaller um, error for the second one. But the, basically, the first one is usual um, cross-validated MSE. Which one to use? Uh, I don't know. Probably the developers think that the, um, this is a better measure for this number of observations. Right? But the, still, the, many people um, want to make it simple. So uh, they use the first one just. Yeah. And cross validated error, um, if leave one out cross validated error, um, that is unique. That is unique. Yeah, that is unique. And OK, so now that we fit the model, uh, more complicated model, to see what's the cross validated error. So we fit the um, polynomial regression model with the degree one to degree 10. So this is p is equal to one, p is equal to two, p is equal to three, and so on. So now we fit the MPG on polynomial of horsepower with degree i, i is equal to one to 10. And then we get the CV, um, the cross-validated error for i is equal to one to 10. We just pick up the um, first one. So the usual, usual um, cross-validated MSE. Then we can see these numbers. So which is the smallest? Um, actually, really, the numbers are similar. Um, this one is smallest, p is equal to 7, maybe. But it's a little bit hard to see. It's p is equal to 1 is largest, then it gets smaller, then slightly larger, larger, then after that, smaller, 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 then gets larger, larger, larger. So it's not exactly sure that what P is the best. Maybe if we continue P is equal to 11, 12, 13, possibly that we have a better one. Um, but the here, maybe um, I would say that the P is equal to seven is the best. Um, I don't know. Anyway, we only have a finite sample, so we cannot really see the um, what is the best. Um, but the here, the, maybe we can choose P is equal to seven. We have 392 observations, so maybe we can, um, yeah, we can fit a little more, but the, you can see 392 observations are not really large. So this, you know, takes the logarithm. So still maybe we have some curvature. 
but it does not make much sense to fit the you know a polynomial with more than 10 degree so that i will just go with p is equal to seven or maybe even p is equal to two maybe sufficient maybe p is equal to one is probably not sufficient obviously it's it has large error but the p is equal to two maybe okay yeah Maybe I would say the data tells p is equal to seven is slightly better than others. So maybe I would say p is equal to seven. Okay, so do you have any questions? So with this cb.glm function, uh, you can conveniently do cross validation without any you know complicated coding. But of course, if you can uh, code cross validation from scratch. It's useful because the this can be used only for GLM. So if you do for other models, still you have to code by yourself. Yeah. So if every model is in GLM, you can use other criterion such as AIC. So the, uh, really, you know, if we want to go beyond the scope of this function, then you have to still the, write a code to, from scratch to do cross-validation. And the, now the k-fold cross-validation. So LOOCV -O -O is computer intensive. So we will do 10-fold cross-validation this time. And the 10-fold cross-validation, so we do polynomial with degree i and uh, we do cross validation with k is equal to 10. Then that we get these numbers. So cross validation, tenfold cross validation has some randomness. So each time you will get the different result. And we still see p is equal to seven is the best. The difference between p is equal to maybe 2 to 10 are very small, but still it's best. And this is another run of cross validation because the tenfold cross validation, we split the data set into 10 subsets. So the you know that split has some randomness. So if we do cross validation again, then we see slightly different results. And uh, what is the best? Still, actually, the, this is the best. So p is equal to 7 is the best. But the, um, not always this is true. For example, um, maybe you know, so, some, um, maybe some differences. Like we compare this p is equal to 5 and p is equal to 8. You can see that the, sorry. So in the first simulation, the P is equal to eight is better than P is equal to five, but in the second simulation, it's opposite. So it has some randomness. Yeah, so this is how to do the K-fold cross validation. So. Another um, benefit to code everything from scratch is the, that the, you can control the random numbers pretty conveniently. Um, I'm not exactly sure that, um, if we can set seed for cv.glm function, but if you wrote, write every code by yourself and if you use sample function to generate random subsets, then you can just set seed first then you can always replicate the result. But the here, OK, so this code, oh, this code actually set seed two, sorry, they set seed one. Oh, yeah, actually, we can set, yeah, that's right. But the, sometimes the, if we use function, um, we get the different result, even if we set seed. Probably CVGLM, it works fine. Yeah, so the, at least for linear model and the generalized linear models that we can use this function to evaluate cross-validated errors. Do you have any questions? Oh, sorry. I, I think they, I have to admit several students. Do you have any questions so far? I actually had a question. 
Yeah, um, sure. I don't get confused with set seed. Um, so mm -hmm. would you just explain how you would determine whether we would set seed one or set seed two? Uh -huh. um, yeah, uh, at first, this number is anything. So just any integer. And the, as long as you set the same integer, always you will get the same number. Maybe I will um, share my screen to show, uh, to demonstrate it. Yeah, so set seed, set seed, the, um, you can put any integer such as two, two, two or something. Yeah, so two, two, two. Then if you generate some random numbers, for example, the five random numbers, we get this. And set seed, for example, one, then we get different numbers, but if we generate the, um, we set seed again at two, 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 then we generate numbers, then you will get the same random numbers. And this does not, um, this is not limited to just one code. For example, set seed um, two, 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 our norm of one, our norm of one, even if we have multiple lines, maybe I'll know two, that we get the first one, this, and the second one, this, and the third one, this. So once you set seed, then we will get the series of same random numbers. And that also applies for, for example, sample function or some other random randomized function. So for example, set seed, maybe um, one, two, three, then sample, um, maybe one to um, 15 and maybe 10, then this is the um, random numbers out of one to 15. If we set different seed, then we get sample function. It, it, the result is different. But if once we go, um, set the same seed, then we get exactly the same series. So in cross-validation, you have to randomly sample the sum observations, randomly split the data set into several sets, right? So um, to do that, then we have to use a sample function, but the sample function's output is, is always the same if you set seed. Thank you, that makes sure. of sense. Other questions? Any? Yeah, so if you don't have other questions, then maybe I can uh, split the group and to do exercise six. Maybe I will show the exercise six first. Yeah, so exercise six. Um, yeah, the first question is the regression and the second question is classification. So first one, uh, we have some data set, um, D8 data set. So D8 data set is um, available in Canvas and we can make a scatter plot. Then after that, the check the um, fit of polynomial regression based on the cross validated error. P is equal to one to 10. And the second question is classification. So classification problem, basically we got the table or we, we get the correct percentage and based on correct percentage that we can do cross validation. Yeah, okay, so I will split the group and maybe you can do it for maybe, maybe seven minutes, eight minutes, then maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so I will, breakout rooms, uh, how many people? Uh, one, two, three, four, maybe, I don't know, three groups, two groups. How many students in one room is the best? Maybe 
two students, four students. What do you think? It's only six students, maybe two rooms. Yeah, two rooms is fine. Okay, two rooms. Um, maybe we move one person to another. Uh, move to room two. Okay. okay, so I open room. Maybe uh, eight minutes, eight to ten minutes. Enjoy.
Professor, I think you're muted. Uh, professor, you're still muted. I don't know why. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So at first we set the working directly, and the, then uh, we set the um, we read the data set. Then we can make a scatter plot, and I can attach D, then plot X Y, then you can make this. So what do you think the um, underlying the true curve be behind this plot? You don't really see it just can you guess what this is actually the simulated data based on some true curve? What's the original curve? Is it like a sign curve? Yeah, you can see yeah. that it ends at the you know two pi, like six point three, and it's sine curve. But the, of course, the in um, in general in statistics, we only have the data, so we don't know the truth. So we don't have the such a thing as true model. So we have to approximate this by something. So just we see the data, then we decided to do polynomial regression. Then what should we do? So maybe the, we have we can do cross validation. So we can do cross validation and uh, to store. CB root mean square error. Um, maybe mean square error. Um, Yeah, I think the default is mean square error, right? So mean square error, maybe mean square for p is equal to 1 to 10. So CV0 is a vector of the 10 numbers. Then now that we want to do cross validation. So um, basically, we have to do define the GLM, but maybe, um, oh, sorry. Um, I is equal to one to 10, we fit the GLM of polynomial with degree I. So polynomial with um, XI, then the data is equal to uh, D. Then after we define this, the polynomial regression that we can store that this cross validated error, uh, in the ice element of CV0 object. So cv.glm arm. I think we have to attach the library at first. Um, I don't know if I did before. But maybe we can try. And we have to specify some k value. Maybe we can use k is equal to 10, or you can use LOOCV. And one, the first one uh, in the output is the usual cross validated mean square. Uh, yeah, actually, that we have to roll to the package the um, boot. So maybe we can copy and paste, but uh, we have to. Do this. Then you can type CV0. Then this is the, it looks strange. So this is the cross validated error for P is equal to one to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So which is the smallest? P is equal to uh, maybe this one. 
This one is p is equal to seven. So p is equal to seven is smallest. Actually, last time I did the p is equal to six is the smallest, but the here p is equal to seven. So question C is the to describe this overlay the fitted curve on A. So um, seven, we want to do that. So maybe um, GLMB, best one. We again, the fit the model with all observation. So seven data is equal to D. Then this is the model. So we can, we have, I think still we have this one. So we want to overlay the fitted curve. So we can use the lines function, X fitted of GLM B. Then we will get this. So it looks reasonably good. So actually the truth is the sine curve, but the almost it's similar to the sine curve. Um, yeah. Yeah, last time that I did it and the P is equal to six is chosen. That is a kind of surprising because the, this looks like the um, odd function. So probably polynomial with odd number of degrees of freedom uh, will be it likely be, be chosen, but the, um, uh, yeah, here seven, so it's reasonable, maybe six, seven. Uh, did anyone get a different number such as five or eight? Six. Six, okay. So maybe most of the time six, last time I did the six was obtained and the seven can be obtained. Professor, uh, can you show us the code one more time? Well, code, sure. And the code is also, yeah, I will upload this to the website also, but the here, um, which part, this is enough? Yeah, um, so k uh, equals 10. Is yeah, that, that just that arbitrary? Yeah, arbitrary, yes. Uh, you can okay. choose anything, 5 or 10, or even if without anything, then the LOOCB, so k is equal to 100. So this has 100 observations, so you can choose up to k is equal to 100. Larger k, a little more, a little more reliable results. I mean, the less randomized results, but the, yeah, uh, usually it doesn't really matter. Yeah, at least two, of course. Um, two may be too small. The k is equal to two means only fifty percent of data are in the training data set, so it may be too small for some data set. For this one, probably fine, but the. Yeah, if you don't have any uh, preference, maybe it's just k is equal to 10, it's fine. Okay, so do you have any questions? So if not, then I will divide the group and the um, start the next one. So next one is classification problem and the, we have some sample code in the exercise sheet. So I will divide it into two groups. Maybe one more people, maybe I just uh, recreate. One, two, three, maybe one person move to two. Okay, so again, 10 minutes for exercise two uh, and a second question in exercise six.
Okay, so I think this time the question A is probably the difficult, and maybe I should uh, clarify what's the input, but the, I think that you have discussed in a correct way in both rooms. Um, but just in case I launch the survey. Oh, okay, that's great. Um, maybe one more, two more, one, one more, yeah. Um, yep. Okay, so great. Yeah, so I share the screen. So in the last question, the MSC, the mean square error is originally, you know, equipped with the function cb.glm. So if we have the vector y and vector y hat, suppose the y is equal to maybe just one, two, three, and the y hat is equal to maybe 1.1 and uh, 1.9 and 3.2, then you can just, you know, calculate y minus y hat square and summation so we can define so basically that we we use the, this maybe mean mean of this as the criterion so this is the mse right so this can be you know um this can be defined as a function for example function if you want to define the mse function function y and y hat and then um, that is the y minus y hat and uh, then summation and the take the um, square then um, like this. Then if we have, for example, maybe uh, to just uh, clarify, maybe this is z and the maybe z hat is 1.2 and the 2.1 and the 2.7 or 8 or something, then you can use the Z and the ZH and then you get the answer. So, but the, for error rate, the, you have to create function by yourself the, um, to run cross validation. And the correct rate, we wanna define this function. And the input is the two vectors. The one is, maybe X is the, um, X is the truth, true class, so zero one. And Y is the um, probability. So like this. So we wanna define this kind of function. So at first we make y as binary. So if y is more than 0 0.5, the, we make it 1. And uh, if y is less than uh, 0 0.5, then we make y2 is equal to 0. So y2 is also a vector. Then we define a table. Maybe you don't really have to define table, but uh, probably this is the easiest way to go. And we make a table of x, x and y2. Then correct rate is the summation of the diagonal element of this table divided by the all elements. So sum of diagonal of TA over the sum of TA. So in this way, the correct rate is, should be the, um, defined. For example, um, if uh, one, vector, one vector A is the 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, and the vector B is equal to 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, one, one, zero, maybe, then table AB is this. So this correct rate is three over five, so 50%, but the correct dot rate AB, AB is already, uh, sorry, the, 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 this is already um, binary, but that is this way. Maybe we, we can define B as the um, probable, prob probabilistic objects such as 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9, and 0 0.2. So in this case, the 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 are less than 0 0.5. So we will get the same result. And actually we get the same result. So this is the way to calculate the um, 
correct trade. Then uh, next that we define the logistic regression model, then um, we calculate the correct rate, then do cross validation. So logistic regression, maybe we define the GLM1. So GLM1 is the GLM. Um, I think that we have to attach the library ISLR. And maybe attach the, oh, maybe you don't really have to attach S market. So, so we use this data set. So GLM1 defined by GLM and the direction on the lag one and lag two. So remember that the lag one and lag two are useful predictor for the response direction. So S market and the family binomial. Then you can get the table of the result. S market dot direction is the gold standard. So this is the Y, the answer, so response variable. Then using GLM1 that you can predict. And this is type response is more than 0 0.5. Um, predict is more than 0 0.5. Uh, predict is more than 0 0.5. Yeah, so you can get this. So basically, we got the 114 plus 546, the correct answers, and the other incorrect answers. So basically, correct rate should be. this, so 0 0.5 to 8. And the cross validate and uh, what will happen. Um, we do cross validation by uh, cb.glm function. So we can do the cross validation, cl.0, cb.glm, and that we use the S market data. And we have the model GLM1 and the, we have cost function here, the new one. So we have to define the cost function and the correct rate. Um, maybe this is a little confusing. So last time MSC, MSC is smaller is better. So maybe um, we should calculate error rate rather than correct rate. But anyway, so correct rate is higher then uh, it's a better model. So K is equal to 10. Then CV dot zero delta, then we get this. So 0 0.5088. So that means, you know, the original model has 0 0.528. This is the correct rate for training. I, I think that this is the um, correct rate for the training data set. But if we do cross validation, more fair evaluation of error, then um, we get the correct rate of only 0 0.5509. So that is the 1.9% smaller than this. So it's almost 50%, slightly more than 50%, but almost 50%. So in this way that you can define any cost function and you can do cross validation. Yeah. So this is the uh, chapter five lab. And today's quiz is actually from chapter four, uh, just the uh, um, some uh, implementation of the linear discriminant analysis. Yeah. So do you have any questions? Yeah, if you not, if if not, the, uh, that's it for today. And homework two is due tomorrow, and the, I will give the midterm um, after the homework is due and the. Um, Midterm is slightly more practical than uh, homework. Okay, so see you on Thursday. Have a good night, good night. everyone. Good night. Good night. A good night.